to Effective Files. I'm Tara, and today I'm excited to share with you my Guerlain collection. It is definitely smaller than it once was, but I'm going to go through every full bottle that I currently own, and I'm going to rank them from my least favorite to my most favorite, with the caveat that I love every single one of these. Um, none of them is even just a like. I really enjoy all of these Guerlain fragrances. Definitely one of my favorite houses, probably my favorite house, um, but yeah, I have some really special fragrances to share with you today, so stay tuned and we'll get right into it. So I have 11 different fragrances that I'm going to be ranking, and we're going to start with number 11, but again, I still love this fragrance. This one comes from the Aqua Allegoria collection, and it is called Limon Verde. So you can see these bottles are really pretty. They're nice. Um, this is what pretty much the standard is for all the Aqua Allegoria line. And these are all kind of EDT concentra concentration. <laughs> what am I, like Elmer Fudd? Um, these are EDT concentration. And uh, they, you know, they have varying levels of lasting power. I will say that the two that I own, there's another one you'll see in a minute, but the two I own last fairly well, but the other one lasts longer than this one. Anyway, Limon Verde is a very beautiful citrusy green fragrance. Now there is a note in this or in, in a chord that's supposed to mimic the Brazilian cocktail called Caprinha. Um, that's made with cachaça, which is like a, it's sort of like rum, but instead of being made with molasses, it's made with like sugarcane juice. And you put lime and sugar and you muddle it up and you put the cachaça in there and it's just lovely. And this definitely evokes that feeling to me. It does sort of seem a little bit more green than like if you were to actually just smell Caprinha, but it definitely has that freshness, that lime, a little touch of sweetness. And um, I think that there might be some other type of slightly green fruity thing going on here as well, but definitely lime, definitely you get that Caprinha sort of vibe from this. And like I said, there's definitely a, a nice, fresh, dewy greenness to it as well. So that one's called Lehman Baird and it's in my number 11 spot. This one was created by Terry Vassar, as were many of these because he is their current in-house perfumer. Next, we have another Terry Vassar creation. This one is hard to find at this point because it's been discontinued for a bit. It's called Mon Exclusif. And this was basically the precursor to the Munger Lawn collection. And so of course it, it smells very similar to pretty much all the Manger Lans. Now I've gotten rid of all of my Manger Lan fragrances. I had the original and then I had the Intense and also the Floral, which was probably my favorite of the flankers, but I prefer this over all of them. And so I ended up getting rid of those because they're very similar. Um, this one though, it sort of has a bit of a sweetness to it that I think is supposed to like sort of evoke the idea of buttered toffee, which I can kind of get that. It's mostly like a vanillic lavender almondy thing kind of going on, at least to my nose. And there might be just the tiniest touch of a slightly spicy tonka bean in here. There could be other florals as well, but really mostly I pick up on the vanilla, lavender, and sort of an almondy vibe. Um, nice, you know, sort of slightly sweet vanilla fragrance. I think um, if you like the Mangier Lange, you'll definitely like this, but I do think that this one is a little smoother. It's just a little bit nicer, I personally think. I prefer this to all of the Mangier Lange flankers, all of them. Um, but like I said, sadly, it's difficult to find. If you can get your hands on it and it's not like insanely expensive though, highly recommend it. In the number nine spot is my other Aqua Allegoria fragrance, and this one is called Mandarin Basilic. This one is just this very delicious, juicy mandarin orange fragrance. It has a little bit of maybe like some sort of floral to it, a little bit of like a tea note, I think, but um, mostly it's the orange and then like basil um, is kind of the added note here that's kind of supposed to be one of the two main stars. So orange, mandarin orange anyway, basil. And like I said, I get a bit of a tea note to it and maybe a little bit of a floral touch, but this one lasts fairly well on me. I wore this yesterday, it was super hot, so I wanted something like, you know, nice and refreshing, juicy. Um, and I would say I could still smell it as a skin scent at least six hours in, which is pretty good considering it's an EDT and it's a citrus fragrance, but I love this one. It makes my mouth water. It just 
smells that good. Mandarin Basilic is one that was not created by Terry Vassar. This one was actually created by Marie Salamang. Um, and she does, I have many of her fragrances. She does fantastic work. But if you're looking for a juicy, delicious, orangey, citrus kind of fragrance, then this one, it's it's got to be one of my favorite citruses in my collection, even though it's low on this list, because I don't tend to wear citruses except for when it's really, really hot, but it's fantastic. So Mandarin Basilic, check it out. Wonderful. Next up in the number eight position is one of the Shalimar flankers. This one is called Shalimar Cologne. And I, I want to be very clear. This is not Shalimar Eau de Cologne. This is not the Eau de Cologne concentration. This is its own separate flanker called Shalimar Cologne. It smells very different from the the eau de cologne. That's why I'm being, you know, very explicit here. Unfortunately, this is also discontinued, but it's freaking amazing. Now, I will say it definitely has kind of veered quite a bit away from the original Shalimar, which I also really, really like, but don't currently have a full bottle of. In fact, you won't see many of the classic fragrances on here because I mostly have like travel spray decants of those. So things like Mitsuko I love, um, Layer Blue is fantastic, um, Apres Landi, I don't know exactly how you say that. I really like that one. Um, Vol de Nuit, I'm trying to think of others. Shalimar, I have like the EDP and EDT in, in decants. Um, and I don't, there's several others, but anyway, um, most of the kind of the, the classic ones, I don't feel like I would reach for a ton, which is why I don't have full bottles of, but I do like to keep, you know, at least five to 10 mils at any given time. And if I run out, then whatever, maybe I'll buy a bottle. But um, anyway, long story short, this is a Shalimar flanker. It doesn't smell that much like Shalimar. It does keep the, the citrusy kind of thing going on. So this to me smells like sort of like a lemony biscuit or cookie. Um, and it definitely has a lot of vanilla in here. There could be other citruses as well, but it also has a floral touch to it. And I think a bit of white musk in the dry down. But yeah, if you think of like a fresh, clean combination with a little bit of like a, a lemony shortbread kind of cookie, like a vanilla lemony shortbread cookie, that's what this smells like to me. And it is another really nice one for the summer. Um, again, not that similar to the original Shalimar, uh, but I, I still really like this one a lot. And this again was created by Terry Bossard. All right, next I actually have a more classic fragrance for you. This is one that has a pretty significant nostalgic uh, value to me because my mom wore it. And um, I'm lucky that I have an older bottle of it. it. does not come like this anymore. This one is Samsara EDT. You can still find these like sort of 90s uh, edition bottles on eBay or places like that. You know, be careful, but for the most part, I think you're, it's pretty safe um, as long as you pay attention to like where it's coming from, the seller and whatnot. But I think it's worth it, I do, um, because they're not crazy expensive to get an older bottle of it. And if it gets crazy expensive, maybe not, maybe just get what's currently available. But um, to me, with the older one, you definitely get a more powerful sandalwood, but I think the Ilong Ilong and Jasmine also pop more in this sort of older 90s version of it. I think there's maybe a touch of vanilla and some other florals, maybe a little bit of like a, a spicy tonka in here as well. But um, with at least this version that I have, this EDT from again, probably the 90s, um, I would say that I get mostly Ilong Ilong Jasmine and Sandalwood, and it's a nice creamy Sandalwood. Like I said, this has a huge nostalgic factor for me because my mom wore it. She wore many things. My mom was also, I mean, she still is into fragrance. Um, not, not the same as me, <laughs> but she still is into it more than the average person. Um, but uh, anyway, so this definitely reminds me of her, which is why I probably don't wear it as much, but I do wear it sometimes and I really like it. It's a fantastic fragrance. Um, so if you, if you haven't smelled Samsara, you probably have, but if you haven't, definitely check it out. It is a fantastic sandalwood fragrance. Next up, we have the first of my fragrances from the Art and Materials collection. This one is called Queer Beluga and it was created by Olivier Polge. This one is my favorite out of all my leathery suede fragrances. It, ju it just is. It's this beautiful soft suede. I think that they said it's supposed to mimic like a soft white suede. To me, when I smell this, I picture like a beautiful light tan sort of suede that's very soft and supple. 
and oh, it's fantastic. There's definitely vanilla in here too. I think there's a slight touch of aldehydes. Um, in the opening, there's like the teeniest, tiniest little drop of citrus, I think. And I'm pretty sure there's a bit of like heliotrope, maybe a touch of like a powdery amber in here as well. But really that sort of suede uh, accord with the vanilla, I feel like are the two main players here. And it's just, it's just so cozy and soft. And yeah, I think if you like suede or leather fragrances and you want something that's really approachable and, you know, kind of, uh, like I said, it's a little softer, um, maybe like a little bit more approachable, then I think Queer Beluga would be a great fragrance for you. The next fragrance also has a bit of a leathery sort of accord to it. This one was created by Delphine Jelk and Terry Vasser, and it is called Louis. And I think the bottle's really cute. <laughs> um, it's a different style compared to most of the Guerlain's. So this one here was, I think, sort of meant to be very much a unisex style fragrance. Now, of course, any fragrance is, but um, a huge number of Guerlain's are, I think, marketed as unisex. However, there are definitely ones marketed towards men versus women. This one, I think the idea was to create something a bit androgynous, and I, I feel like they've done a really great job with that. To me, I get this warm sort of benzoin vanilla kind of thing going on with some leather. It's a little bit resinous. This to me smells more like a black leather though. It's not like, it's not overwhelming by the way though. I wouldn't say like when I immediately smell this, I think leather. I actually think like mostly sort of, like I said, maybe like a, a vanillic benzoin kind of thing going on, a little bit of spice little bit of woods. There's something there that gives it sweetness. Um, and maybe sort of like, again, a resinous-y kind of feel. I believe there's carnation in here as well. Um, although I wouldn't say it's overly floral by any means. It's just a light touch of floral. And then, like I said, that sort of black leather. Maybe the bottle is leading me to think it's a black leather, but that's what it smells like to me. And I love it. I love this fragrance. I think that men and women alike will very much love this if you like that style of fragrance. And I think this one can be a little bit sexy. So that's my number five spot. It is Louis. Before I show you my number four pick, I have to preface it by saying that my bottle looks like crap. It's in, in general a beautiful bottle, but mine was evaporating and I did what I had to do to stop that because this was too expensive to let it just, you know, evaporate into the air. So in my number four spot is, this looks so janky, uh, is this one, Les, Pl Les Plus Bourgeois de Ma Vie, which I think means the most beautiful day of my life. <laughs> um, and I think this was pretty much meant to be a wedding fragrance. I can see that. It's very pretty. By the way, I, I decant it into here when need be um, so that I can keep this sealed and I don't lose any more than I already did. Um, so La Plus, La Plus Beaujour de Ma Vie. Um, this one, again, was created by Terry Vasser. It definitely has an almondy kind of kick to it. I get some Angelica in there. Like kind of like how in Angelique Noir, you get that beautiful Angelica note. I get that in here. I get a little bit of like a citrusy thing. Kind of reminds me of um, like with the, the almonds and a bit of sweetness that's in here. It reminds me a bit of like a Jordan almond kind of thing, like the candied almonds, which goes well with weddings, I suppose. But also I get some floral notes. I think if I were to guess, I would say there's orange blossom in here specifically. It kind of what it smells like to me. I'm sure there's vanilla to add to that sort of like sweet almondy vibe to it. And then maybe a bit of musk. I'm, there's probably other notes as well, but that's mostly what I get is like this like slightly fresh Angelica with like that candied almond sort of sweetness, touch of citrus in the opening. Yeah, and, and then like I said, maybe some vanilla and musks in the base with a little bit of florals. It's beautiful. I think this would be a gorgeous wedding scent. And if you actually like, you know, the actual like pump is beautiful. It's one of those little like poofy things, but of course the, the poof little pumps, I don't know what they're called. What are those called? The little atomizers with the puffs. Um, anyway, they're beautiful, but they allow so much evaporation that I just can't keep it on. So I put the cap that it came with back on and I wrapped it because it was still evaporating. So anyway, this bottle sucks. <laughs> Um, but the fragrance itself is beautiful and um, they have an even fancier version with like flowers all around it. So if you want to spend like, you know, 
thousand plus dollars on that to have a beautiful photo for your wedding, go for it. But I'm pretty sure it smells pretty much the same as this one. Um, and this smells lovely, really like it. So if you're a fan of like almond notes, check this out, it's a really good one. Next, I have another fragrance from the Art and Materials collection. And in fact, this one is probably one that a lot of people would put as their favorite. But for me, it's coming in in the number three spot. Still really good though, considering that I love all of these. So this one is definitely like pretty high up in my collection as a whole. These next three really all are. They're three of my favorite fragrances in my entire collection. So, you know, just because it's not number one doesn't mean I don't really love it because I do. So this one is called Angelique Noir. And by the way, all these bottles look the same except the name is on the side here is different. Um, you can see I'm running low <laughs> on this one here, but um, this is a beautiful Angelica, like Angelica seed. And I think also the root is in here. Like they, you know, extracted oil from the root to get that. Um, but with vanilla, again, there's a vanilla presence here. It's like a green sort of vanilla because of that Angelica. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It does have a little bit of a powderiness to it, in my opinion. Um, so if you're not huge on powdery fragrances, then, you know, think about it. But to me, it, there's like a little bit of a spice here, just a tiny bit. I'm not exactly sure what it is, but something just a little bit spicy. Maybe a little freshness. Is it pear? I can't remember. Maybe like some sort of slightly fruity freshness to it. And then there's a little bit of a cedary woodiness too. I'm pretty sure it's cedar, it smells like cedar. Um, but I, like I said, the vanilla, like this sort of green Angelica vanilla combo is really the star of the show with this one. Um, and it's, it's just beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. If you have not had a chance to smell Angelique Noir, you need to try it. Um, I would say in terms of sort of what I would classify as a green vanilla, this is my favorite. It's just that green vanillas aren't my favorite overall. All right, when it comes to the top two, again, it's like they're basically both my favorites, but I decided to put the one that I wear most frequently in my number one spot. And in fact, I've gone through a whole bottle of my number one previously, so some of you will already know what it is. Um, but the one that I put at number two is, is one of my absolute favorite fragrances ever. It makes my mouth water. And when I wear this, there's no doubt in my mind that every person that smells me thinks that lady smells sexy <laughs> because this is a sexy fragrance. This one is from the Elixir Charnel collection and it is called Gourmand Coquine. And I've heard some very ugly rumors that this has been discontinued. And if that is the case, I will lose it. <laughs> um, I need a backup bottle if that's the case. And I don't buy backup bottles, but this, woof. It's so good. Like I said, it makes my mouth water. It's delicious. It's sexy. This one was created by Christine, is it Nagel? Nagel? I'm not sure how you say her last name, but also um, Sylvain Delacourt, uh, who now has her own uh, fragrance house company that she does. Um, anyway, uh, this one is just, it's the best chocolate fragrance that I have, hands down, period. It's like this boozy, I think it's supposed to be rum, like this boozy, rosy chocolate. There might be like a little bit of a tea, I think it's a little bit of a tea note in here as well. And maybe like something teeny tiny bit spicy. Definitely vanilla has to be in here, right? It's just, oh, it's so good. I could smell this forever. I could smell this forever and I would be happy and I'd be drooling. <laughs> um, oh, it's so good. Um, I've never smelled this on a man, but I would imagine that if a man were wearing this, I would follow him around like a puppy. I mean, unless he was like rude or a jerk or whatever. But you know, I'm just saying, if there's a good looking guy wearing this, yeah, I'd walk, I'd walk behind him for a while, <laughs> like a creeper. Anyway, um, so that's Gorgamon Coquine. I love it, it's amazing. And like I said, I, I love this just as much as my number one, but I don't wear it as often because it is, a, I, I think, a bit sexy to wear to work. So I'm not gonna do that, um, but, like my mouth is seriously like drooling right now. It smells so good. Anyway, let's move on. All right, so at this point, those of you who've watched my channel with somewhat regularity already know what my number one is. It is a fragrance that I absolutely adore. It has definitely at various points in my life been my favorite fragrance of all. Um, that's so hard to pick anymore, but still, it's a, always a contender as is Gourmand Coquine. This one is, of course, Spiritus du Bleveni. 
And this, like I said, is my second bottle. So although there's less in it than Angelique Noir, I've already used up a whole one. Um, and this is why it's in the number one spot because it's so, it's so good, first of all, it's beautiful. Um, but it's one that I reach for a ton. Like I, I frequently wear this one. It's, it's a soft fragrance, not fantastic lasting power. I don't think at least really the ones that I've tried from the Art Materials collection, they don't last forever. They're not beast mode. But if you're looking for a very refined, beautifully blended fragrance that really, you know, does a great job featuring specific notes, then that collection is just hands down one of the best. Um, so Spiritus du Blivigny was created by Jean-Paul Guerlain and this one is like, you know, obviously vanilla, but it's like a boozy vanilla. I think it might be rum again. I definitely get cedar in this one as well. There could be the tiniest bit of something like incense or something spicy, maybe benzo in a little bit. And a little bit of florals, I think, like a light touch, but but man, to me, this is mostly just this beautiful, woody, slightly boozy vanilla. And I love it. It's so cozy. Um, I would wear this all year round because it isn't uh, super like strong. So even in the summertime, I don't think, even though it is a slightly boozy vanilla, that it would be overpowering. I would wear it in the night time in the summer. Um, but I do mostly wear this in the fall and winter, and it's just... It's my baby. Um, so that's my number one pick just because of how frequently I wear it, but I also equally love uh, Gourmand Coquine. So those two, my favorites for sure. Um, and I love all of them, but that's those are my picks, all right? So that's it. So those are all my Guerlain fragrances ranked from my least favorite to my most favorite, even though I love them all. <laughs> um, this house is definitely near and dear to my heart and I've smelled a lot. Like I said, I have far more fragrances even just in like the decant size or like travel spray size of a lot of, especially the classic ones. Um, and even some of the, the men's marketed ones I've been, like, been lucky enough to try, but I am curious about um, a few other men's marketed ones. So anyway, what I would love to do now is ask you to give me your recommendations of some Guerlain fragrances that maybe I haven't tried or you, you don't think maybe I've tried, um, as well as just like letting me know which ones are your favorite or what are your thoughts about these fragrances that I talked about today. I know some people get kind of disappointed with the longevity of the art materials collection, but some people are like me and they just think they're so beautiful that it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so let me know your thoughts on that. Leave me comments down below. I hope you all enjoyed Enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful in some way. Um, if so, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell. And as always, thank you everyone for watching. I'll see you soon. Have a great day. Bye.